It's time for another musical interlude. Let's get started. Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Hey, and welcome to another episode of Musical Interlude. I am your host, Casey Bell. And today's guest is John McDonough. Let's get the show started. What is your earliest memory of you getting involved with music? Well, I, I always loved to sing. From as long as I can remember, I loved to sing. I always joke about how I used to crank my stereo in my bedroom and sing along at the top of my lungs and pretend I was on stage. And uh, one of my favorite artists back then was James Taylor. And uh, so I, I started taking guitar lessons because I wanted to be able to play and sing Fire and Rain by James Taylor. And uh, so that's sort of uh, how it began. When did you get the um, notion or the idea or the courage to make it a business and not so much as a hobby? Well, I started playing gigs a long time ago in my mid twenties, but it was always sort of in addition to my main job, whatever I was doing at the time. And I will say that music sort of came and went depending on how motivated I was or how busy I was with other things. Like I was a psychotherapist for a long time. And uh, there, were, you know, so music sort of fluctuated with that. But it was about 10 years ago, I decided I, I was really burned out with therapy and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And, and I was sitting there and I was like, well, music is the only thing I really, really want to do. And so the, about 10 years ago, I decided to really pursue it full time and as hard as possible. And, uh, and it's all I've done since. So a lot of people consider music therapy. Did you ever intertwine the two professions? Yeah, I never did. That's a good question. Other people have asked me that too. And I thought about doing it, um, but no, I never did. No, okay. I was more I was more talk therapist and I was also a, like a sports psychologist, more focused on those areas. Wow. Wow. So talk about how you started the business, how you got into it, and what did you do to find out how to start the business? Well, I lived in Austin for 25 years, and I recently, just a few months ago, moved to the Chicago area. So, and I'm sure you know this, but Austin is, um, well, it, it was especially, still is, but was especially a huge music hotspot. You know, it was, it was one of the places to be if you wanted to be a musician, especially 25 years ago. So I learned real fast that you had to work your butt off if you wanted to do anything in music. There was so many uh, great musicians there, so much competition. And so that's, I mean, that was lesson number one. It's like, you just have to work harder than the next person. And, and lots of times it's not even so much about talent. It's about you know how hard you're working to get the next gig or to try to get on the radio or whatever you're trying to do. And, um, and that's, you know, so when I started trying to play gigs and started playing more consistently in Austin, when you say, how did I start the business? I, this was before email and this was before, you know, texting and things like that. I would call these people night and day and just, I, sometimes I'd have to call 10 times before I finally, they would get so sick of me. They'd be like, fine, you can play on Thursday night. And, and then usually once I got in, you know, then they would be like, oh, yeah, he's pretty good. And it got easier from there. But boy, to get that first gig, it just you just have to work. And that's that's how I got it. That's how I started the business. I was just on the phone bugging these people to give me a chance. And it's still like that to even to this day, you know, so um, it's not quite as hard. It doesn't feel like at this point, but it's still just it's it's uh, it's just a lot of work to get into the, to play those gigs. So how well or not well did you adapt to going from Austin to Chicago? <laughs> well, my whole family lives in this area and has been here forever. So, and I have, um, so I've been here a lot. 
And especially the last 10 years, I've been here a lot because my sister uh, had a baby. She, uh, and uh, I'm very close with her. She's now 10 years old, but uh, I'm very close with her. So especially the last 10 years, I was coming up a lot. So it hasn't been that huge of an adjustment because I knew, you know, I knew what I was getting into. Um, and so far it's good. You know, I mean, uh, I, I like it. I, I haven't had too hard of a time with the weather yet. That was a fear. You know, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I like the sunshine and warmer temperatures. So I was a little nervous being back here full time with the winters. But, uh, but so far, so good. And of course, the irony is you, as I'm sure you know, what's going on in Texas the last few yeah. weeks, you know, so... Uh, I'm like, well, I guess I, I moved out of there just in time because as, as cold as it is here in Chicago, I've got heat and I've got electricity. So, right. I guess they never prepared for the what ifs. <laughs> I, mean, they, I, I mean, how can you, right? Exactly. It's definitely uh, not what they were expecting. Yes. Crazy. So let's talk about your EP Second Chances. What um, inspired you to complete that project? Well, a couple things. I love when artists do acoustic versions of their songs. And I've wanted to do uh, an acoustic CD for a long time. And I just, and I just love when, I just love hearing the, like the voices shine on an acoustic CD. I love hearing the different arrangements on an, a, on an acoustic project versus the full band. So that's been on the back of my, in the back of my mind for a long time. I just wanted to do this. And I made a CD three CDs ago called Surrounding Colors. That was a little more electric, a little bit more rock and roll. And I'm proud of the CD, but I sort of feel like the songs, I feel like my, my true artist self is more an acoustic musician, a little bit more mellow, a little bit more acoustic. I thought the songs were good. I just felt like they needed to be re-recorded in an acoustic fashion. So it was sort of the, both those things combined that made me um, that made me feel the time was right to do this. Now, all the songs aren't from that one CD. There are some songs from a different CD to, as well. Um, but I just felt like there were some older songs that either I wanted to record them acoustically or I had made some changes to them over the years and I felt the arrangements were a lot better now than they were when I recorded them originally. And so that was my motivation for doing the acoustic CD. And that's why it's called Second Chances because I thought the songs were good. They just needed, um, they either need a little more work or they needed to be recorded acoustically and given a second chance. So. Awesome idea. Now Thanks. let's talk about your single, The Place Where I Belong. Um, talk about the original um, inspiration for the first time you did it. So I love the mountains. And um, when I was younger, from six to 10, I lived in Colorado. And we used to go skiing every weekend and go to the mountains in summer. And that was when John Denver was huge. He was at his height and he lived in Aspen. So he was especially huge in Colorado, but he was just huge in general. And so you know, we listened to him nonstop in the car going to the mountains and just, you know, in general. Then I hadn't been to uh, the mountains or Aspen for a long time. And I went back there finally, this was probably about five years ago. And they had built the John Denver Sanctuary in Aspen, which is this beautiful place right in the heart of town. And it's got, you know, these, it's flowers and a, like a little stream and uh, it's just very peaceful. It's very cool. They have these huge boulders that are like six feet tall and they've engraved his lyrics in the boulder. Um, and so that's really cool. And so I just felt very moved by that. So then I come home to Austin and literally it's like two days later and I'm flipping the channel and all of a sudden there's this John Denver documentary on TV. And I thought I had sort of pretty much known pretty much everything about John Denver, but I had, I learned a lot in that documentary. So those two things, the song came pretty quickly after that. I just felt very moved by the whole experience and then seeing this documentary and learning some more things, I wrote the song. So that's, the song is about John Denver. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. So do me a favor. Um, talk to anyone in the audience who might be struggling in 
fulfilling their dreams because we live, especially in America, in a place where everyone is not so encouraging on people's dreams, you know. So for the person out there who wants to be in the music business, but they don't have anyone encouraging them, what would you say to them? Well, a couple things. If you feel it's really what you want to do and you feel it's sort of in your soul, go for it and go for it now. Don't wait. Because I sort of always knew music was really what I wanted to do, but I didn't have quite the confidence to really do it full time until, like I said, about 10 years ago. And I sort of, I wish I had started earlier. So if you feel like it, don't put it off. And, and then the other thing I want to say is I was talking to another friend of mine. This was a few years ago, a musician friend. And we were talking about, you know, there's so many aspects of the music career that you have to sort of do on your own now. Like, you know, you have to uh, rehearse and play gigs and make music videos and do live streaming. And, and I was talking to him and I was like, God, you know, what do you focus on? There's only so many hours in the day. And, and he said, well, you have to do it all and you have to do it all the time. And that it's sort of overwhelming, but I sort of feel like that. I mean, that has always stuck with me and it's entirely true. And I think it's, it applies to anyone starting any business. But as, you, know, you have to do it all and you have to do it all the time because there's just too much competition and there's too many other people out there who are so talented and working hard that you can't really afford to you know, not be a hundred percent on it. Okay. So that would be my advice. Start early or not later and, and work on every aspect of being a musician. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So I only have one more question for you. I have a feeling you're going to say John Diver. So I'm going to give you <laughs> two options. You can, you can give me two names. But if there's anyone in the music business, whether they be dead or alive, that you would like to work with or collaborate with, producer, singer, musician, anyone, who would it be? Yeah, I got, I hate that question, by the way. You know, it's just because it's so hard. There's so many. Um, well, give me three or four. Okay. Well, I always say first off, probably would be James Taylor. That always comes to my mind first. I just think... Um, I think he seems like a very engaging, smart person who's very funny. And of course, he's so talented. So I think I could uh, enjoy spending a lot of time with him and also learning from him. And that also goes for Billy Joel, the exact same thing, who I love his music as well. I find his personality very engaging. And like I said, I think he's smart and funny and I would really enjoy being with him. Um, I always do fall into the singer songwriters, you know, so number three, I'm not sure, but it would probably be someone like Harry Chapin, maybe, you know, someone like that who I really respect, but the surprise one who I would really love to spend a night with and sing with is Janis Joplin. I think she's fantastic. And, uh, and I, that would just be a night to remember. <laughs> my chest, throw my head back, I see the mountains touching the sky, she looks at me with her golden hair, and the voices sing out, take me home, and the red rocks hold us tight. This is the place where I belong It's a feeling I've never known The Aspen speak to me in the breeze And one day when I'm gone My words will be written in stone As the world outside is crumbling Our brother's shipping off to war 
Well, that is all the time we have for you today on Musical Interlude. I want to thank our guest, John McDonough, for stopping on by. And of course, for you, the viewers, for stopping on by and watching. Thank you. Have a great day.